All right. We are on episode four of We Never Learn or We Can't Study. Or that long title that I can have, that I tried so many times just to, just to get it right. But We Never Learn episode four, I presume? Let me see. Are we on four? Yeah, we on four. Yes, episode four of We Never Learn or We Can't Study. You know, this, I really like episode four because they really broke down to three separate sections of each individual waifu with that we have in this waifu war of we never learn. Now, when I mean waifu wars of this spring, I mean, just think about it. Winter, we had the quint the waifu wars when it comes to the, the quintuplet sisters, you know? And then we fast forward to spring right now. We fast forward to spring where we got the waifu wars since the since before the anime of this show. We like, like, uh, you know, uh, of We Never Learn and uh, manga wise and the whole people who started watching this we all haven't we all picked who our best girl is just by looking at that now like I said before I'm team Okita I'm team Okita to the core now I'm gonna get that now push that aside let's talk about episode 4 for a bit man you know let's just say the main character Naruyuki is one lucky bastard in this one not lucky bastard in a bad way more like, more like a good way. He is so lucky to have these three gorgeous girls on him. Like, literally on him. Well, not all three. I mean, the other girl you'll see later. But still, these main three girls, oh, God. Right now, these three girls are so, like, it, it, it's hard to describe it. But the main character is so lucky to have those three. And it's split into three separate sections of each show that I'm going to try to break it down for you. So, Let's start with Fumino. You know, what a way to kick off this show with her ravishing th thin body. And I get it. People like people like long blue long hair girls with thin bodies. Okay, I get that. I'm not saying it's wrong. But then she go on the thing, she's like, oh I'm losing weight. I mean I'm gaining weight, and I'm like, oh my god. I mean, think about it. You really think a skin body like her, a skin body like her is so like she think it, she's fat, really? I don't believe so. But I love when um, Urika brought in these kind of snacks, you know, and Fumino was trying to eat chips and all that stuff, and then she didn't realize, oh, I'm gaining weight! It's those snacks! And then I love when Urika also brought up the fact that Ogita is like, when it comes to dieting, it goes, all the nutrition goes straight to her boobs. It's fun, like, <laughs> that's kind of funny because now that I think about it, anime logic stands, does stand tall with it. I mean, there are some symptoms of anime logic that says when a girl eat food in anime, it goes straight to her boobs. I mean, literally, literally. Like, I'll I'll be putting an example. The most common one I can think of right now in my mind, Sekirei. And now you guys know Sekirei, right? Now you know how Musubi make this giant ass curry food, and what happened? She ain't get fat. It goes straight to her boobs. You know what I mean? And now that I think about it, every Sekirei that has like a slim body, it goes straight to her boobs. So that means all the curry that they made, it goes straight to their boobs. I'm like, wow. And that makes sense. That makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, I mean, Miss Kobayashi Dragon Maid, for example. Look at Taru. Uh, look at Lokua. You see, see, what, you see what I'm trying to get at? Even look at the girls from Monster Misune. They're thin as fuck. And it goes straight to, her, they go straight to their boobs when they eat. You see what I mean? It's like that. Now, moving on aside. Moving on. But... Fumino trying to diet herself, you know, trying to lose lose weight, and it's really stressful her out. It's really stressed people out when it comes to dieting. Okay, I get it. You guys feel like you want to lose weight, go on a diet. There's other ways to go on a diet, but don't stress your don't stress yourself out when there's food in your way. Try to make a daily plan to eat when you want to eat, or drink when you want to drink, or pick the food that has less calories or more calories. You know that's how that works. I also like the fact when everybody brought in food, Naruyuki brought like a giant three-layer cake and her little sister baked it. I'm like, wait a minute. They live in a poor, Naruyuki lives in a poor house. Not saying that's bad or anything. I'm just saying they live in a beat-up house, but their little sister got time to bake a three-layer cake that that good? What? Are, we, are they rich poor people? I mean, oxymoron type thing going on? They, they live in an oxymoron house? To have this kind of a three layer cake that freaking beautiful? And then they shared it to everybody? Like, damn, that's so funny. 
Now, the studying thing was also was hilarious because um, Fumino thinks she lost, she thinks she's gaining weight like a pig. So Naruki, he asked Naruki to fill her stomach. That is the closest thing that she has gotten closer to Naruki. That is the closest thing she ever done. Opening her shirt a little more and then have her feel her stomach, to, to, like touch her stomach to see if she actually, and it was, does it look, this, does it look perverted? No, I don't think so because she wanted to be touched. I don't think it's perverted or anything. But, looks, but with her story, she, she, you know, got her confidence back. So now she's making, now she got a lot of snacks, you know, dieting every now and then to get back her weight. So we accomplished Fumino on that. Great Fumino moment. Now, we're going to go to Okita's moment. Okay, so this Okita episode was about Saraka. Now, Saraka, this is the definition of Yuri. She is the Yuri to Okita. Like, like, Okita got the main character, and then she got the Yuri love of Saraka. And Saraka, Saraka, the captain of the chemistry, president of the chemistry club, she wants to be closer to Okita because the fact that she's up, because both of them are head scientists. But, but remember, Okita doesn't want to be that kind of thing. She wants to be more of a rough writer, you know what I mean? So... Okito, I'm sorry, but Saraka, she's obsessed with Okita. So she wants to stay with her forever. Like, literally, going to the same college together, going to the same bathroom together. She's obsessed with Okita. Read the manga. I mean, if you look at the one of those previous mangas with her room, you'll be surprised. But, yeah. So she's trying to get under, she's trying to get, trying to find out who's this person that's hanging out with her. So she just sit next to her and ask her questions and questions about, do you have a girlfriend? What type of girl do you like? And Naruki's thinking, oh, I'm being popular? But I, <laughs> he's like one of those guys, like he's one of those guys, wait, I've been a nerd my entire life, but now I'm popular now? I got, I'm popular now? This girl's actually talking to me. There's so many misunderstandings between Saraka and Naruki. That is so literally, dude, they just misunderstanding each other on that. And Ogita kicked them out because they were too noisy. But the good thing about that episode is that we get to see a new character. And and uh, Naruki, when you tell Saraka about the days that you're on tutoring Ogita, what a coincidence quote come out and she's going to be with her all the time on those days. You should have never said that. Now, Onward Urika. What is the best way for a main character to end on this final episode? Have Urika's boobs on his chest. Uruka was playing basketball. Like, when it comes to sports, it's her thing. But when she came home and she rushed, she's like, oh, I'm not wearing a bra. And she's just, she's just stressing. She's just so bashful, so nervous that she's not wearing a bra. It's like, it's like going to school. On, it's like going to school and you realize you're not wearing your underwear. Or going to school and not wearing your freaking bra. And it freaks out on many people. So with her, she's freaking out that, oh, I forgot a bra. I don't know how now she's going to react to it. So they're playing basketball. She's all she's doing all those maneuvers, but she's scared that if she makes a move, even for a second, like like this low in the basketball movie, she's got boobs gonna be moving. So it's gonna freak her out. But when she got the ball, Naruki, her imagination flick click when she's like when she saw her trying to grab it, he he just her mind is just set like is she he's gonna he gonna touch my boobs or something? So scared he grabbed the ball so lightly and everybody was shocked like <gasps> He grabbed the ball from the best player. All that. And then the second half came in and fired up. Fire, it fired Urk up way too much. She didn't even care about her chest movement. She just making those three-pointer shots like, damn. And, all, and then as soon as the ball, this was her last moment. She made the shot trying to, Naruki blocked it. And then, Nari, and then their chest touched. And <laughs> he didn't want to admit that he felt that. He did not want to admit it. But we all know that he did. That's why he turned away all bashful because he knew he felt the chest. The, the nipple chest of Uruka. That's why Uruka was flipping out. Now, I love how not only Naruku, Naruki knew that she's not wearing a bra. How dumb was he to come in, come in, come home and tell the little sister, Oh, yeah, I see you wearing something. Looking down at her bending down and seeing the bra that she's wearing. And he he looked at her looked at her and said, "Oh, I see you now. I see you wearing something." Freaked out everything. And <laughs> this guy, yo, this guy has had a lot of misunderstandings. This guy's confused. But you know, 
the, the good thing about this episode was that the main character got some. Not like full something, but he got something. I mean, think about it. He touched, he touched Fumino's belly. I mean, touched her stomach, yeah. Uh, he patted Ogita's head. And, and got another girl on the side. And, let's not forget, he got, he got some of Uruka's chest on him. So, yeah. This is a good Naruyuki moment that he got in this episode. I mean, literally. Now, next week, next week, I already knew what was going to happen. This is going to be the shipping. This is going to be the, the, I will say, the midpoint of the climax of the shipping wars. And we never learned because what you're about to see will shock you. And I'm telling you, it will shock you. Because what I read, them, I know this is going to happen. I knew what the next episode was going to happen. So get ready for all you haters out there, all you likable shippers. Because next week is going to be one of those times. So I look forward for next week of We Never Learn. I'll see you soon.